our journaling probably helped and the insurance getting back to you. <laughs> Both of those things helped tremendously, I'm sure. Um, I literally just got in the mail the goat um, dyes. So we now have goat dyes back in stock. Yay! So if anybody missed out on the goat dyes, um, I got a few more of them in. Not a lot, but a few more of them in. So. Well, hello! Sandy, we just got the goat dyes back in. Yay! Hi, Janet. We are going to color this amazing goat. I'm so excited. I love him. I just love him. So I will show you what I did while watching TV last night. I colored this mermaid. Here's her little fairy up here from the You Are Magical set. And um, so I just colored her last night because I was sitting around. Um, yeah, so there you go. She got colored up. I have other things on this page to color up. But she got colored up. If you need the You Are Magical stamp set, it is in stock. Um, this is a need. This stamp set is such a need. It's very much a need. Not a want, a need. Okay. Thanks, Janet. Fire tail. Yeah, she does kind of look like her tail's on fire, huh? This tail is on fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, y'all. So today, um, today has been rough to get going. Let me just tell you, today has been rough to get going. Um, but I'm trying to be productive. Hi, big sister. Um, I have like a massive headache. Um, I woke up with a massive headache. So just FYI. Um, hi, D. These are also things that I colored the other day, just sitting on the couch, um, just coloring. So even though you don't see projects with everything that I color, um, I do take time and sit and color every day. Well, not every day, almost every day, where I just color things. So, yes, there we go. I know, I hate headaches. This is like two clicks shy of being a... Oh, really? That's awesome, Amy. Um, this is about two clicks shy of being a migraine, but it's headed there. Um, headaches are the worst. I know, Lee, you've been coloring. I'm so proud of you. Um, oh, are you working on a project for Glenda? So let's get right into this. No, no screwing around today. Let's just get into coloring. So um, I took this paper. This is a um, A2 size, so five and a half by four and a quarter. And um, I stamped the goat. I masked him off. I stamped the cans, um, masked them off. All kinds of things because I just wanted to have some fun and some layers and some different things. Um, oh, good. I like to see when people are coloring. Hello, Allison. I was thinking about you earlier today. Um, I need to talk to you. Um, I, I think that the weather is creating all of these migraines, like really seriously. There's a lot of pressure in the air today and... Um, there's snowstorms happening like all around us, but it's like sunny and 48 degrees outside right now. So it's, we have weird things happening and it's been really windy for like three or four days. And today there's barely even a breeze. So it's very odd. Um, hi, April. Yeah, Lee, you're getting snow tonight. Utah's getting snow tonight. Um, so these are my really cool tweezers that Sandy gave to me. Um, they are from only you. And I have not put these on the list 
but I will find them and put them on the list because Sandy is 100% right. These are like literally the best tweezers out there. Um, it's 89 there. Yes, it is. Uh, ooh, that does make crafting interesting. Yeah. So I'm going to lift up these masks. And the masking paper I used was Gina Marie. Um, not Gina Marie, Gina K. Different Gina entirely. And um, just her regular masking paper. Nothing super special. And I save my masks. I try to use them a few times. So just FYI. I tend to put them back on here. Now, part of the cool thing about masking is, so these cans are metal, so they're going to have like a gray base. Um, yeah, yeah, you need these. You could like shank somebody with these. Um, hi, Linda Liu. Yeah, I saved my mask too. I mean, why not? You know, masking paper is expensive. But, so the cans I wanted to have as a gray base, but the goat I wanted to have with a tan base. He's a little more challenging to pull up his mask. So it allows you to stamp in different colors. So I highly recommend getting some masking paper, whether you go buy it from Simon Says Stamp or um, wherever you can find it. Like I said, Gina K has masking paper. Um, I think that like you can get it, Gina K's masking paper from Simon Says Stamp or from um, Ellen Hudson. You might be able even to get it at Honeybee. Um, this is actually my favorite masking paper, Inka Dinka Do, and I don't even know if they make it anymore, but this masking paper is like 10 times stronger than the Gina K stuff, and so I love it. Anyways, um, I know I do, I don't use it as much. Hi, Cheryl. Um, I don't use it as much as I used to, but I do use it, so yeah. So, um, if you guys want to win the project from today, simply share this video and then hashtag did someone say prizes. All you got to do is share and hashtag did someone say prizes um, in the comments here. And we're going to get started coloring. So, does anybody know what color they want the goat to be? I am open for suggestions. And the first one that says rainbow, I'm going to drive to your house and beat ya. <laughs> Kidding. Kind of. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Not entirely, but a little bit. <laughs> there you go, Sandy. Amazon sells ink and you can do my awesome Lee. That's what I need for Christmas. <laughs> Spotty gray goat. That's a good one, Allison. I like that. Gray and white. How about a pink goat? I mean, it is October. Breast Cancer Awareness Month, right? Melissa, I love that you always throw like odd colors out there. You're like, why are we doing a normal goat? We don't need to do a normal goat. Normal goats are boring. Pink! <laughs> I knew that was coming, Lee. I just knew it. So I have E55 and I'm starting on the horns while we decide on what color of goat. Um, Jamie's goat, y'all. <laughs> did someone say prizes? Pink. Oh, did you put blue, Amy? I didn't see it. A blue goat. All right, so let's do a wonky color. I'm feeling like weird. Let's do a wonky color. Let's do, you know, let's let's go with the pink goat. And he might have like blue hooves or purple hooves or something like that. We can do a hybrid of these. 
pink with a little purple mixed in. We could go like a pinkish purplish kind of color. I'm down with that, Vicky. I think I just don't feel like doing normal right now. Thank you, Linda. Orange, Jana, you know I love orange. Um, Sandy, can you tag Lena in this video? I don't know if she's trying to comment. We're trying to figure out what's wrong with her commenting because she literally cannot comment on any video of mine. And so, yeah, there's that. So thank you, Vicki, for sharing. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Amy, for sharing. Thank you, Linda, for sharing. Sandy, I'm sure you already have, but can you share this video to um, Passionate Paper Creations and Crafting of Hue and Stamp Junkies? I bet you already did, but. Okay, so now I am moving on to E53, E53. And again, just adding texture to these horns. And you notice on the second color, I go much, much faster. Again, that's just so that I'm not creating a perfect pattern. Because your brain will always want to create a perfect pattern. Thank you, Vicki, for sharing. Thank you, Amy, for sharing. Do I have comments coming up or am I losing? Hi, Cheryl. It says Cheryl's watching. Thanks, Sandy Ledoohoo. Um, I don't know if you guys heard at the beginning of the video, I did say that I got more of the goat um dies in because they sold out like immediately everybody wanted the goat dies so i got more of them in today so i will have leah put them in the store this afternoon once i inventory them and get them put away um there's a couple of people that pre-ordered them so, I mean, you can go onto the website and put your name in the pre-order if you're afraid that they will sell out. It's probably a smart thing to do. Look at that goat. He's so cute. Put a t-shirt on him. Oh, girl, you have seriously, seriously seriously overestimated my artistic abilities. <laughs> Man, I wonder if I could do that. Ooh, that'd be tough. Tough for me, anyways. I can't art. You guys think, everybody thinks, everybody thinks that I'm seriously artistic. And hey, Deanna, I haven't mailed your card yet because I'm a bad friend. Um... I have zero artistic ability in me at all whatsoever. <sighs> Just draw a sleeve and a neck. Easy peasy. I know. I'm thinking it. I'm considering it. Because he could be a pink goat wearing a blue shirt. Or a blue goat wearing a pink shirt. Just saying. 
and uh, I'm thinking about it. Here, let me. Oh, Allison, do you see what you're doing to me? <laughs> I know I'm a bad friend. <laughs> I'm up for the challenges. I love how you guys think that I can do all this stuff. It amazes me. Okay, so here's his little, here's his little sleeve. And then his collar is gonna go under his little goatee. I mean, it's only ink and paper, right? I just feel bad because somebody's gonna win this and if it comes out terrible, oh my gosh, I feel super bad. But that's okay, we're gonna try it. And then somebody can be the proud owner of a Jamie flop. No, I'll just color them a different card. <laughs> it looks more like a sweater, I'm not gonna lie. And I think it needs to come like Okay, here's our goat in his shirt. It will not come out terrible. Oh, Allison, don't make me cry. Then I won't want to get rid of it. Thank you, Holly, for sharing. He can wear a rainbow shirt. Damn, that's it. I'm driving to your house and I'm beating you up. <laughs> Just add flowers. That's true, Sandy. Your flops are my aspiring to. Allison, that's so sweet. I don't even think I could fit a 52 on there, but hey, you never know. Okay, so um, so now what are we going to do? Um, let's do a blue goat. Yeah, we're going to do a blue goat. Do you see how I change my mind like in the middle of all of this? Like, it just happens. I don't really mean for it to, but it just it just does. Okay, so I have my standum denim, standum, standard deni, denim blend. Ooh, Vicky, mine just did that the other day. Oh, no, I'm not done with rainbows at all. <laughs> Amy, did you see I just colored this last night? She's definitely rainbow. <laughs> rainbow critters are hard. Like critters are hard, but rainbow critters are super hard. So um, I just don't think I have the mental capacity for rainbowness today. That's all. I do love coloring rainbows. Not going to lie. I do love coloring my rainbows. But um, it takes a certain amount of focus that I'm not sure I possess at the moment. So we're going to go with a blue goat. And him's going to be cute. He's somebody's pet goat because he's wearing a blue t-shirt or a He's wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> right? A blue goat kind of makes me happy too. Thank you, Allison, for sharing. I appreciate that. There's a lot of people wanting to win the goat today. Because he's so darn cute. Do you see him? He's so cute. Sandy is the artist of this little guy, this little critter. So everybody tell Sandy how awesome her artwork is. Because it is. I told her I needed a goat that we just smiled at. That like made you want to smile. 
pop-up box with flowers than give a die that was made for a much bigger die-cutting machine. How do I make my own? Hmm. <laughs> yes, Sandy, you will not be defeated. I imagine I can see the smoke coming out of your brain right now, trying to figure out how to make that happen. And you will. Sandy is a 3D project master. Look at this little goat. He's so cute. It kind of looks like he's wearing shorts, too. I'm not going to lie. Um, Sandy, do you mind texting Leah and telling her that I'm live? Five goats? Oh my gosh, pygmy goats. Oh, so cute. Yay! I see you, pal. Hi, Carrie. I wonder why it doesn't work on your phone, Lena. That's so weird. So very weird. Okay, so I'm going to do this in stages. Like I said, my diminished brain capacity today just is not working. Um, Sandy, I don't think Leah can watch because I think she's working. But she just texted me a couple of times. So I want her to know that I'm not ignoring her. I wonder if Nona made it. Nona, you wanted to watch the goat video. I wonder if you are here. Oh, good, you are here. Right, shakes your phone in frustration, throws it out the window, picks it up, pets it. Can you watch from your phone? You just can't comment from your phone? I wonder what's up with that. That seems so odd to me. Just another Facebook-ism, I guess. We all expect a lot more out of our free services, don't we? All right. Thank you for the reminder that I get to watch you and Lydia. I know, right? I hope that I don't annoy people with my reminders. For the bigger screen, yeah. Some people cast um, up to their TV so that it's like really big. Um, I hope I don't annoy people with the reminders, but I just want you guys to know that I'm going live. Like you don't have to reply or anything. I just, you know, if you want to see, I don't want you to miss out. Um, I know you need those statements. I'm trying to source them, but, um, big sister contact me cause I have personally a ton um, aw, thanks, Deanna. Um, yeah, so I don't want to annoy people with them, but I do, you know, I, I want you guys to know. I mean, I suppose I can make a blanket, blanket statement and say almost every day I will be live at this time. 
but sometimes it just doesn't work out. So like doctor's appointments and you know, all that kind of stuff. Like tomorrow, I don't think I'm going to be able to be live. I might if I can work it out, but I'm just not a hundred percent sure. So I don't want to say, Ooh, I'll be live tomorrow. Cause it's Friday. Yay. Um, when in fact I can't end up going live. So yeah. And yesterday I couldn't go live because I was in Boise at Nona's house, um, teaching all of them a really cool class and trying it out for the sweet retreat. And I think we decided we are going to do it for the sweet retreat because they loved it. They had mucho fun. You need the reminders. It takes a lot to annoy you. <laughs> That's funny. That makes me laugh. I know, I kind of like that after I do my live, then it's Lydia. So, like, I can listen to Lydia while I'm cleaning up. And that kind of makes me happy. Um, for the most part, unless I'm, like, doing something else. Ooh, and it's Friday, so is it gel press Friday with Lydia today? I think it is. And that's always fun. She does some really cool stuff on her gel press. Um, for those of you that don't know, we're talking about Lydia Fiedler. And she is, um, if you're looking for her group, it's Understand Blue Craft Group. Or Class Group, or something along those lines. But if you look up Understand Blue, you'll find it. Oh, today's Thursday. <laughs> Thanks. And tomorrow's Jill Press Friday. Whatever. Dude. <laughs> yeah, so that's my life right now. Don't mind me not a, even knowing what day of the week it is. Okay, I think that's enough with the dark. <laughs> Thanks, Amy, for setting me straight. I appreciate that. <laughs> I obviously need the reminders on what day of the week it is. That's why I can't do a specific project on a specific day. You guys just found out why. I can't be like, Jill Press Friday because I don't even know what day of the week it is. So, apparently Lydia has it way more together than I do. I'm giving him like a bowl cut right now. That's what it looks like. It is highly overrated. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> For reals. Highly, very highly overrated. my husband this morning I thought it was Friday because it was a horrible week he told me every day can be Friday for me because I don't work <laughs> girl same but as much as I don't work I do work because I own sweet sentiment so in some ways I forget what day of the week it is because it's 24 7 for me but in some ways it's also the opposite of that like yeah hard to explain your business is in your house so you never really leave it so you're kind of always working and never working all at the same time if that makes 
any sense at all. Okay, and I feel like I want this to come down a little bit further. And then I'm gonna not forget his ears. Um, you know, Allison, it's a lot of, um, medium familiarity. So the only difference between you and me is, is I've probably spent a lot more time coloring, um, than you have. I don't know that for sure. Cause I know you've been crafting for like a long time. So there might be other factors at play. Um, but for the most part, to get this fine tip detail has so much to do with familiarity with your marker. And I know each one of my markers like I know children. Um, I know how they act. I know how they react. I know how they interact with one another. Um, and every time you fill them and replace the nib, they're gonna act a little bit different. So um, the fine tip detail just comes with time. And that's what I mean by like, I sit on the couch and I color things for no reason. Like I don't color them because I'm going to make a card with them. And I don't color them because, you know, I have a release coming up or a design team project that needs to be done. I color them just for the practice. And if they make it onto a card, then awesome sauce. Um, but if they don't, then I don't worry about it. Um, so I go through phases where I have a ton of images that are just hanging out and completely colored. And then I go through points where I have no images because I put them all on cards or, you know, I send them all to Sandy and tell her to put them all on cards <laughs> or I leave them sitting on her desk and make her put them on cards. Um, because my love is coloring. I do like card making. Don't get me wrong. Or art journaling, which I just started doing. Um, but for the most part, my stuff goes onto cards. So... You just sit and play with your markers and you learn. I love how he's coming together. <laughs> Almost every day for the past 12 years, got crampy hands. I think it has a lot to do with it. Yes, yes, that has a lot to do with it. Um, Lee, yes and no. Um, when I do the shadows and stuff, slowing down has helped, correct. Um, but when I go in to make hair, like I'm doing here, notice that the speed of my brush strokes has, um, gone up exponentially. Um, so it depends on what you're trying to achieve. If you're going for smooth blending, then slowing down is definitely going to help tremendously. Um, if you are going for randomness, like hair then slowing down isn't gonna help because you're going to get thicker brush strokes um, because there's a thing in the world called physics. So physics will stop you from getting smoother brush strokes just because your pen is on the paper for a longer amount of time, thus releasing more ink into the paper fibers. So there you go, there's my two cents. Bless you. My son's room is adjacent to my craft room, so he sneezed, in case you guys didn't hear that. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, and new nibs. New nibs helps, too. He does look like he's wearing a ski mask at the moment. <laughs> right, exactly, Amy. You just do them for the technique and not the card making. Um, Allison, my fine coloring has deteriorated because of fatigue and weakness. I no longer worry about it. I just work around it, but I wish I could still do it. Yes, April, I get that. Hi, Aunt Candy. Um, I also have a technique, a couple techniques that I teach, um, to people who are very, very shaky because I went through a long time, um, where I have, I have, I had to get my thyroid taken out. I had a mass in my thyroid and so it was removed and it was very scary time and all that good stuff, yada, yada. Um, but I was very, very shaky during that time. And so I had to figure out ways to color to mask the fact that I was really shaky. Um, that's how I learned to color, um, like my mermaids, my dragons, that kind of stuff. Um, because I could do a lot of the stipling techniques and it really helped. It really helped that. Okay, so Mr. Blue Goat here. I don't want to be a goat. Nope. Because a goat's got no hope. Nope. Put a little thing on his nose. Yay. Now he's Mr. Blue Goat. <laughs> right, Allison. <laughs> For reals. <laughs> Okay, so here's our goat in his t-shirt or his pajamas or whatever it is that he's wearing. Um, it was meant to be a t-shirt, but I'm not so sure it ended up being a t-shirt. So, um, are we still going pink with this t-shirt? Sure, why not? So, RV66. You never heard that song before? Um, it was like a youth group type song. back in the day. I haven't colored his goatee yet because I have some ideas. So just FYI, it's not that I'm forgetting it. It's because I haven't really arrived at a decision yet. Okay, so if you are a shaky person, this technique that I'm using right now will actually help a lot. So instead of worrying super much about your super fine motor skills, if you hold the um, Copic marker close to the nib, so I have my finger on the gray part and then I put my thumb on the gray part as well. And then I go into that line and I do little brush strokes. So I'm not worried about doing a straight line. I'm worried about little brush strokes. So if you're shaky or somebody who has some sort of shaking disorder, you can come in and, and stiple almost all of that. Stippling or stipling is a very great way to create a super smooth blend. So again, you're essentially coloring, think of it as like coloring with polka dots. Um, or if you were in high school and they made you do those pen and ink um, type drawings, that is kind of the technique that you're using. So you can see if you're a shaky person, you can still make a nice, even, soft line by using the stipling technique, okay? Okay. And we'll go through, we'll color this whole shirt using that technique. I know, right? A rainbow goatee. Somebody had to say it. Oh, you see me coloring those goatees correctly? What? Weird. I make it look easy to cut. Well, that's my job, Cheryl. So again, the same way is, again, I'm just stipling and I'm going over... Archie. Archie. 
Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I'm going over where the previous line ended and I'm saturating that because if I'm shaky, I can't necessarily blend. I mean, I can a little bit, but if I'm using the stipling technique, the blending isn't going to work so well. So I have to overlap in many, many little dots here. So you just keep overlapping and you'll saturate that part. Same thing down here. And it really becomes a great technique um, for creating lots of different things. You can do skin tones like this. You can do, I like doing things that have texture to them. So like if this was a sweater or a t-shirt, you know, the there's texture within the sewing of it. And so I really like this technique because you don't have to be quite so precise and it will help build your confidence a lot. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> Little Lobo. He's probably more interested in where the UPS guy is that Archie's barking at. Tyler, I'm going to throw you off here because I'm about to use a three color blend on this shirt. <gasps> Gasp. Three colors only? What's wrong with me? Do you guys even know? Okay. So you see how that works. Because she knew there wasn't a dog in the house. <laughs> yeah, my dog reacts. Archie doesn't react to barking like on TV or anything like that. Um, my other dog that I had, our old guy that passed away a couple of years ago, he would bark at anything. If you were watching TV, if there was any critter that showed up on the TV or any dog that barked or anything like that, he would definitely go running out the door barking at it. Now, since I'm saturating this paper so much by using this stipling technique, notice that I've left like a white spot right in the middle. Oh, I should have put holes in his shirt because he's a goat. Dang, opportunity missed. Um, so notice I've left these white spots. Because I'm laying down so much ink, if I want to make this look like I have more markers, I'll just go over that really softly with one pass. And so it looks like I have more colors. <laughs> She'd run barking. The denim three color blues. No, the the shirt was these three colors. Okay. So now we have a blue coat. In a pink shirt. I'm almost afraid to ask like what color of hooves we should make. So I might not even ask that question. <laughs> um, somebody said orange. I think pink and orange and blue all go well together. So we're going to give him an orange goatee. Because that's the kind of goat he is. I know, I'm only going to use three colors, but I'm going to make it look like I have more than three colors because that's how I roll. Tyler always freaks out if I use anything less than five colors because he knows me well enough to know that something's not okay. So like this, I'm starting with three colors, but I'm already adding more. So I'm adding YR18 down here because it needs a little more texture. This is why when I do retreats and stuff and people go, what colors are you using? I'm like, bring all the colors, all of them, all the things. 
you're going to need all the colors. And um, he's been eating pumpkins. <laughs> Maybe he is dressed up for Halloween. Maybe we don't know this. And then if I add this yellow here, it's going to turn this part of his beard green. So then it's going to look like I've used five colors when I've only used four. Ha ha, Tyler. <laughs> Yay. Bring all of them. Because reality is, and this is me being 100% transparent and honest, reality is I will tell you that I'm going to use like this color, this color, and this color, and then <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> I have a really, really hard time sticking to a color list. So, yeah. So it kind of ended up being a rainbow beard. That was sort of my idea, but just the middle of the rainbow. And then I'll change my mind. You are correct. So I'm using my warm grays for his hooves. I love that he has like big old hooves for his feet. Like he's got, like he's a baby and he hasn't grown into his hooves yet. <laughs> and it looks like Pac-Man right now. <laughs> See what happens when I have a headache? I get like punch drunk. Did the stipling technique help any of you guys? Is that something that any of you are going to try? Allison, I think you should try that. You don't have to grip your pen super tight either. You can have like a nice loose grip on your pen so that if your hand is all crampy, um, you know, it can help with that. There goes my lid. Thank you, Melissa. I appreciate that. Thanks. I'm glad, Cheryl. I, I really do hope that it helps. I've had a couple of people that I've taught that um, have, you know, chronic tremors or, you know, things like that and just thought that they couldn't color, um, that, you know, coloring wasn't going to be a thing for them. And they've turned out to be fantastic colorists just using that technique. And what you have, embrace it, you know? So, Maybe you're not a super smooth colorist. Maybe all of your stuff is colored in that dot type scenario, like the mermaid tail. That's fine. Um, you're doing what makes you happy. You don't have to impress anybody else. So I think that it looks beautiful when people do entire pictures like that, though. Entire colorings like that. I think it's really cool. It's a lot of texture and a lot of fun. I like it. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. That means so much to me. That's so sweet. Yeah, you guys never be afraid to ask questions. I'm here to share. Look at Mr. Goat. Okay, now I'm going to take this W1 and I'm going to go under his ears to color the inside of his ears. See that, Aunt Candy? The inside of his ears are down here. <laughs> she colored his ears backwards yesterday, which is fine. She just thought they were, like, turned up. Okay, so now we're going to color his eyes. Are you guys ready for this? 
I feel like he should have green eyes. Does anybody have any um, objection to putting green eyes on the goat? Maybe we should do hazelish eyes. That's part of my charm, Amy. <laughs> that's, that's definitely how I roll. It takes three to five minutes to strangle a person. And, um, and um, you can color with dots. It's fine. <laughs> Hazel eyes, Yana. Okay. Hazel eyes. And the green, I'll use YG-17. Okay, so when doing hazel eyes, you still have to create your color blend. So here's my five color blend. These are my darks, these are my high, my midtones, and this is my highlight, okay? So it's still, you still have your five color blend, you still have your true color, your shadow, your highlight, and then your bridge colors, okay? So... Um, don't think I've like gone completely off my rocker with choosing colors. Um, so I have G triple zero. Thank you, Holly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by making a big old circle around his pupils. And I'm terrible at drawing circles. So it takes me a minute to make it round like I want it. This is how Sandy and I met, coloring eyes, just in case you're wondering. Coloring eyes on an Annie Rodriguez um, image. That is how we met. Okay. Now, I'm not going to worry too much if they're the same size or anything. They're relatively close to the same size, but he's a goat and he's silly, so I want him to be a little bit funky anyways. Okay? So then I'm going to go, and I actually have these backwards. The 97 is darker than the 25. but So then I'm going to go to my B97, and I'm going to start coming out from the center. And he's going to look super weird for a bit. It's going to look like you've totally ruined his eyes. Um, yeah, I sure can. Is that helpful? Then I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Okay. I know it's going to look like you ruined his eyes. Just stay with me. Uh, E25. And I'm going to come from the outside and go towards the center. I know it looks like a total hot mess. Don't worry. It does look like fireworks. <laughs> Thanks, Deanna. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've had this lecture a few times. It looks weird. Just trust the process. Trust the process. I've been doing eyes for a number of years just the same way. Hi, Archie. Can you not bark? Archie. Lay down, please. Okay. 
There we go. Now I go to the green. I didn't realize how many colors go into brown eyes. These are hazel eyes, Amy. Doing hazel. So I'm filling in the gap from the brown to the blue. And again, you don't have to be perfectly even with that. <laughs> yeah. Then I'm going to go around this brown and just kind of make it green and even again. Okay, so not a ton of ink, but just kind of making it nice and even. Because if you look in the mirror at, uh, at your eyes or at somebody else's eyes, they're darker in the center and the outside. And then in the, in the middle, they're darker in the center and then around the outside than they are through the iris. I don't know how else to explain that. Okay. So this looks really dark, really scary. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, Sandy. Y04. And I'm going to go around where the edge of the blue is and super saturate it some. Okay. Then we go back to our lightest green. And this is where we add a lot of ink. Use sweeping motions, circular motions, and you wanna push this out. Now, sometimes I go in for a second coat, sometimes I don't. Just depends how it comes out and if I like it. Okay, so we have that. Now wait. <laughs> then I grab my multiliner and I add his pupil. And this is where his eyes really come to life is you grab your white gel pen, put a dot at the top of his pupil, and then put a glisten down there. Okay, now the other thing you wanna do with eyes is I will use C2 or C3 And make his eyes look round. And I know this is a super thick and scary line, but it's okay. It'll blend out. Okay. Then you grab your colorless blender. And you push this towards the outside. And there you go. You can even Thank you, Lori. I appreciate it. 
Um, then you can take your gel pen and add a little highlight there. There you go. Look at him. <laughs> Thank you, Linda Lou. Um, while I have my gel pen in my hand, I'm going to add a little highlight to his horns. To his hoofs. All right. I'm the master of ice. I don't know about all that, but. Oh, look at him in his hazel eyes. How cute is he? <laughs> Thank you, Holly. <laughs> um, okay, so now we're gonna color cans. So do you guys wanna pick colors for cans? Red, orange, yellow, green, teal. We could do something like that. He could be sitting on a rainbow of cans. I don't know. What do you guys want to do? You guys crack me up. Nobody's going to want this card because they're going to rainbow all the things because <laughs> they're going to think that the goat is staring at them. They won't want him to come home to them. Whoever wins today, he's going to hide in their closet. I'm just coloring the can tops while we're deciding on colors for the cans. I guess I can't top that. I should have saved the eyes for the end. That should have been the grand finale. Now everything's just going to be... I did a pink shirt. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, Archie. You scared the holy living heck out of me. Um, we live in a neighborhood that's fairly quiet. And all the residents, like, walk their pets. And apparently this time of year, um, during my live, is pet walking time. And so that's what Archie keeps barking at, is that people are walking past the front of the house with their pets. So he's upset. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so true, Amy. <laughs> so true. Uh, quiet neighborhoods are nice, except for when everybody has a dog that they walk past your house while you're trying to color alive. And your dog is a protector. And he wants to protect you while you're coloring live. So, hey, Arch. Can, can you not, babe? Please? Please? But like Tyler once said, he would wonder what was wrong if he didn't hear Archie on a live. Okay, so have we decided a rainbow of cans? Is that where we're going with this? I guess that's where we're going, because that's where I'm taking it.
It isn't alive without rainbow coloring. Right? I got a rainbow something. Even though I rainbowed his beard. So there's that. I know. He would be very concerned for the, the welfare of the Archie. If he didn't bark. At least once during the live. You would think that I, you know, tied him up somewhere. Or even worse, <gasps> gasp, locked him out of the craft room. Heaven forbid. He is a really, really good dog, though. Like, we really won the doggy lottery with that guy. So, although I give him crap... He is an actual trained emotional support dog, and he detects my panic attacks. I know, right? Grayscale or Sabia. Boom. Done. It's happening. Yeah, then he would literally sit at the door and scratch and bark. Sandy knows what it's like to have Archie sit and scratch at the door. Because she usually sleeps in my craft room. And stays up all night crafting after I go to bed. Because I'm an old lady and I go to bed early. Except for when I'm in Texas. I magically get younger and stay up much later when, I, when I'm in Texas. Don't forget to share this video if you want to win this project. If you want this goat to be mailed to you. Share this video and then in the comments here, write a hashtag did someone say prizes and you could win this goat. I don't know if he's going to be on a card or an art journal page or something, but somehow. Oh, okay. And yes, it is open to the world. The last two people who joined are not in the United States. I believe Nathalie is in France and Sharon is in England. It is open to the entire world. And if you already won, don't feel like you can't enter. There's no limit to the times you can win or enter to win. Because if I didn't give away these cards... I would have 700 million of them laying around. I probably have near enough for a card sale right now, but not going there yet. Not time. So I'm going to make this yellow. So it's going to be like orange morphing into yellow. And then I'm going to make this one lime and teal and purple. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So I'm going to start with G07. What do you mean like you? Oh yeah, like Sandy. She has 750 bajillion cards and that's a very rough estimate and probably a very conservative estimate because she does have 750 bajillion cards. And she has them all organized by company, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> right, Linda, you know, you know how many cards Sandy has laying around there. It's crazy. And she puts them all with an envelope and in a sleeve and stores them in a plastic tub until it's time to use them. It's amazing. I wonder what these cans are. Do you wonder that? I do. I'm like, I don't know what comes in a lime green can, 
besides maybe Mountain Dew. I can't think of anything else. And I can't think of what would come in an orange can either. Mickey Harmer is watching. Well, thank you, Mickey Harmer, for watching. Okay, so teal. Campbell's Soups comes in a can. Yes, but that's a red can. I know my soda is Sprite and Surge. Yes, peas could come in a lime green can. You are right. Oh, Sunkissed is orange. Yep. I would have never thought of that one, Sandy. Ever. Um, isn't Hormel chili in like a reddish, red and orange and yellow can? Oh my gosh, that's like reaching way back though. This live is running a bit long, I apologize, but I did stamp out a lot of things to color, so. I was gonna do a background too, but that might have to be either off screen or minimized. <laughs> BG15. I can't think of a purple can other than Sunkissed now that Sandy said that. They have the grape Sunkissed. But I can't think of anything in a teal can. Because Chicken of the Sea is blue, right? At least not this color of teal can. I know, right? I'm definitely not going to go into her live. I certainly won't be on that much longer. I just like to keep them to about an hour-ish. And so we're kind of already over that. So, yeah, my bad. Lydia will kick my booty. No, she won't, but I know you guys will all abandon me. Be like, I saw what she's doing. Now I'm going to go to Lydia's live. I would have forgiven you if it was Jail Pass Friday, but, you know, now that I found out it's not Friday. <laughs> kidding. Just kidding. Sort of. There's a bit of truth to every jest, right? Oh, no wonder that looked so light to me. Two phones, two lives, done. <laughs> done and done. I was thinking that this purple looked really light and it's because I grabbed the wrong purple. People are texting me and I can't talk. Um, Lee, will you text Nicole low and tell her that I'm live so I can't talk or I can't read her message? I'm not ignoring her. I promise. Por favor. Okay, there we go. That's darker purple. So a purple can. I don't even know what that is. Zevia? I'm not a soda person though, so. I don't do soda. 
I don't do like anything carbonated. I do sweet tea and lemonade and coffee. Yeah, Sandy knows purple. Okay, so here we go. So now I have a silver gel pen. Which one do I want to use? That one's just glittery. This one's silvery. Okay, so this one's from Pear Blossom Press. Oh, sugar-free soda. Gotcha. And I'm going to add some highlights to these cans. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. Then, I know he does need his smile. It's coming. Um, I want to use point one. This one has something on the nib. Yeah, right, Amy? I've never seen that either. He also needs his eyebrows, just in case you're wondering. Now, he has kind of a little wonky, crooked smile. <laughs> and then he has his little cheek lines. And then I'm going to add his eyebrows in. Because they make him so expressive. Oh, didn't that just make him? That's the like punch at the end. Okay, so since we don't have time to do like a full on background, we're just gonna ground him some. So I'm going to pull out my N markers. I have N4, N2, N O, and I think I'm actually gonna go as dark as N5. So again, because I'm a chicken, let me zoom all the way out. I start with my N-O. That did it, right? And I'm going to add grounding here without touching the cans. Or the goat. I know, difficult. Ooh, I touched that red can. See? But you can oversaturate that and get that mostly out. Okay. Then I'm going to go for the big mama jamma. And I know I should put him in grass, but I was thinking about adding some grass back here, but I just don't know yet. So I'm going to add some dark. All this would be really dark because it's underneath his body. OK. 
Okay. And four. Thank you. Don't forget, if you want to enter to win this, share this video. Hashtag, did someone say prizes? And then once I post this to my YouTube, I will go in and search the hashtags to get a list of everybody who hashtagged this video. And then I will randomly choose a winner. Like I said, full disclosure, my random is sometimes my husband, sometimes my child, sometimes random.org. Go back to NO. Blend these a little bit softer. Okay. Now, really soft, we're going to come in. I'm going to come in with BG Quadruple Zero. Ooh, that marker's dry. Sandy, I think I have to throw that one away. So we'll go BG triple zero. So when you don't have time for a real background, like a full on, let's color it and make it background, this is your cheater background. I didn't finish coloring his hair. His little mohawk has white spots on it. How'd y'all let me get away with that? So I use my chisel nib to color in almost everything um, to get to where I can go close to these. And a lot of times I'll switch over to my brush nib but he's not overly detailed, so I can fit in here with my chisel nib quite well. Look at that, I just colored in his hair. No, I'm gonna go back and add the right color. But, it works. by his sweater just make sure you don't drag any of that pink out okay and I know it looks like super bad right now um thought he was going gray um Sandy that's that one that we think has a um a crack in it somewhere because it it keeps on drying out um so then I will use where is my marker that I want I will use BOO and I'll come in from the sides and just kind of vignette this this is why it's good to have these paper desk mats because you can color right off the edge. OK, 
Okay. And then I need one darker than that, RG. And I think I'm gonna use B41, yeah. Oh, she's like right walking by our front yard. This last one I used the brush nib on because I want it to be softer. But you'll see what I'm doing. So far, this is not earth shattering background, right? This is something anybody can do. It's really quick and it really finishes off that picture. Okay, then I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna go to the brush nib of this BOO. And I'm gonna blend those two together. Same on this side. He does look super guilty. <laughs> he does, he does. He's like, Whoop, did I steal all the cans out of the recycle? My bad. Dang it, I keep touching that red can. So this is just layers. I mean, all I'm doing is layering this color in here. And when it dries, you have this really cool like haze around him. Okay. So then, like Sandy suggested, I'm gonna put a little bit of grass around him. Just some little tufts of grass. Oh yeah, maybe he drank all the soda. Maybe he wasn't supposed to drink all that soda. And then I will take this sentiment and I'll pop it up here. Oh, and look at our little goat, guys. Yay. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know we were in a little bit long, but um, you still have a little bit of time to enter to win. So um, again, share this video and then hashtag did someone say prizes. Um, hi, Vicky. Um, so yeah, thanks, Janet. Um, so I'm not sure yet if I will be live tomorrow or not. So I will post and let you guys know. And, um, I am probably going to go make myself a cup of coffee and, um, crawl into bed with an ice pack on my head and watch Lydia's live. And, um, I'm going to take this B91 and finish his hair. So whoever gets this, um, I, I guess I'll just pop this on a card and I'll sign it for you. And here we'll sign it right now. Point oh three. Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, Lee. I'm going to sign right here on this purple can. 
That's not quite thick enough, it won't work. Thanks to Sandy for drawing the cutest little goat ever. And um, thanks to all of you guys for watching. And I will upload this video to my YouTube. Um, so you have until this video is uploaded to share. And um, hashtag did someone say prizes. And then a winner will be chosen at random. And announced in the group. So again, thank you all so much and have a wonderful day. Toodles.